This is issue number 68 for the Kaiju engine, <clears throat> and we're going to be uh, setting up the mesh code to be able to load the mesh data either from from a file or something, you know, through code, uh, so we don't have to build out kind of what we did uh, over here, these kind of, I don't know what to call them, just inline assignments of vertex vertices. So we want to support being able to build them out, but also just pull in a bunch of data. So one of the things we'll be doing soon is going to be font rendering. And I want to do drawing of, say, a, I don't know, paragraphs or pages of text. I want to be able to render as much text as possible in a single draw call. So we are going to need a way to set the the model of this data and i don't really want to cast this every time so i'm just going to have a set model and i'm going to have a function for that set model on that base just so that we can call that having an individual model on each one uh each one of these makes it so that we can place all these uh letters of what's being rendered in the font for example and just do a single render pass across all of those because they're instanced. So that's uh, that's why I want to make that helper function. And now we can get over to some mesh stuff. So I think the easiest way to get started here is we'll create a function for generating a um, like a, a quad, just a screen quad that we can transform. So I'll start off with var s quad mesh and this is uh, going to just be the actually no I'm not going to make I'm not going to do that. I don't want any statics right now. I'll, I'll add that if I need it. What we're going to do is we're going to create a quad and we can just pull it from the We'll have a, a quad, we'll have a mesh cache that we can pull from, um, and that's how we'll do with it. Not have it set. Sorry, there's a lot going on in my mind. So we'll start off by saying new mesh quad. This will return a mesh, and we need to build out this quad. So I'll build that out real quick. Okay, so here we have a quad that's built out, and we we need to set up a um, mesh cache because we don't want to create a new mesh for every single letter and every single quad. If we can, we want to do a single render pass for every quad that shares um, that that shares the same textures and all of that. So that'll make it so that we can do really performant uh, render passes on on large UI you know, large scale UI stuff. So I do have this function here, new mesh from verts, which we're going to need to set up. But first, I, I think I'm going to set up a, a mesh cache, mesh cache. And this is going to be similar to our other caches. A mesh cache struct. Okay. And what we'll do over here is we'll take in a mesh cache. And we will see if it exists. Uh, we can we can say if a cache dot exists, and we'll do something like quad sure. Else we'll create it and we'll add it to the cache. So here we can say uh, cache dot add quad and then mesh is equal to new mesh from verts and we'll just pass that in so we'll create the mesh and then we'll add it now we can just add the key to the mesh um, which we which is be helpful for assets and, and things like that so i'm going to add no oh, i'm in the mesh i'm going to add a key this could be lowercase Funk mesh key string turn key. 
m.key, of course. So we want to look for quad, and that could be a const. Const uh, key is quad key. If it exists, then we are just going to return cache um, mesh key. And here, cache add, and we can just say mesh because now we have the key as part of it. So let's work on this exists uh, and this mesh. So first thing I'll do is I'll go to the texture cache and let's see what we're gonna need. We're gonna need access to the renderer most likely. So we'll put that in there. We'll need access to the asset database to load things by key if we, if we can't find it. Um, we can, we'll have a mapping of key to mesh and we'll have a list of pending meshes. Mesh. Cool. So we'll create our, I'm sure we can do that, uh, but also we need a new mesh cache, similar to how we do it with the other ones. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we can create a mesh cache. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to the host now before I forget. Mesh cache. And then host.mesh cache equals that. Okay, so we have an exists. We're gonna have a mesh where we can pull by um, pull by key, but also if it doesn't exist, if not uh, um, mesh exists key, then we are going to, oh wait, I can do this. Um, okay, if, okay, return M, else, oh my gosh. I don't know what this editor is doing. It's driving me nuts. Okay. Otherwise, we are going to try to pull it from the assets. So let's go to our texture cache. All right, I guess we say assets dot, um, oh, sorry, m dot asset database. Is that what it's called? Asset database dot. I don't know what. What is going on here? I'm a dummy. Uh, I named these both M mesh. So now we say M dot asset database. Um, else if M dot asset database exists key, we'll do this. And I guess that means we'll need the error. No. Uh, let's see what it gets us. Errors dot new mesh does not exist. Um, new mesh mesh from asset. So this is not likely what we're going to do. We're going to want to pull up the binary and then work with that. We're going to put a panic not implemented. I'm going to pull up the binary and then read the uh, mesh from the binary and, and that's just going to have to be another function that we have. So now we need this create pending function mesh cache oh t pending meshes Pending mesh, pending meshes, mesh, delete, create. Okay. So we got a few things we need to add here. We're going to need to add in punk m mesh, delete, create, render, or, um, Render uh, create mesh. So that means we're going to need to have 
some of this pending data. We're going to have to have the pending vertices and we're going to have the pending indices so we can call this same function. Uh, or similar function because we're going to pull the key. I think we'll have two functions. We'll have find mesh, which we'll go through and try to find, why is this textures? Uh, M dot uh, meshes. I call it textures, yeah. Huh. Um, if it has it, it returns it. If it finds it in the database, it returns it. Otherwise, it returns nil and the error. So I guess this could also be a Boolean, as in we didn't find it. True, we found it. False, we didn't find it. Then we can have a func m mesh cache mesh. This will be for creating the mesh. So we're going to need a key. We're going to need verts, uh, vertex, and we're going to need indices. So here we check to see if the mesh already exists, return it. Otherwise, we do uh, new mesh, and we'll pass in verts and indices that can go into the pending. So this will be m.pending meshes will be that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's create a new mesh function, which is going to take the verts and indices, and we are going to have similarly Pending verts, pending indices. And we'll probably pass in the key here too. Key string. Key is key. And we're not actually going to set the mesh ID that's going to be set whenever we do the uh, create mesh, which is going to call a new mesh from verts. Actually, I might just have a, I can just do renderer dot create mesh pending verts, and then we want to clear out these two. Okay. Cool. That means this needs to have the key come in. All right, getting a little closer here. So mesh, cache, uh, we need the key. Now this is going to be f uh, if the cache exists. So I can say if um, mesh OK cache find mesh, and we can get rid of exists now. Just have find mesh. So if it is OK, Okay, then we just return mesh. Otherwise, we go through and construct it. So we have our verts here, uh, one, two, three, four, and our indices. New mesh from verts is going to just become a new, new mesh key verts index, and then I guess that's what the cache is. So I guess just say cache.mesh. There we go. That's what I was doing. And we can return that mesh. Okay. So I guess we should check to see if our new mesh quad is working and our mesh cache at that. So I'm going to go back to main. And I'm going to get rid of this test drawing now. Nuke that guy. And get rid of that. And we can now create a uh, mesh is equal to, I guess I could keep the test drawing code block or function. 
just don't return anything because we're not going to do anything with it. Uh, we'll keep the same shader. Instead of having this verts, we'll get rid of that. We don't need it. And we can say host.mesh cache. Oh no, we can just say um, rendering dot uh, quad, new mesh quad. And we'll pass in the host cache mesh. So we have our mesh. We don't need to create that. We It's already a pointer, so we can remove that. Sure, we can put the Android uh, texture on it. All right, let's see if we broke anything. We did. Rendering mesh ID is nil. So we need to set this mesh ID. It's not being set by the time it needs it. Um, so we actually need to see, we need to only add it to the draw. So we got two options. We only add it to the draw if it has if it is ready the other option is skip it in here if it's not ready we can say if the draw is empty uh, continue or if the draw dot mesh dot is let's say is ready so if it's not ready continue we'll just work with this for now and see if we can optimize if we need to optimize later Funk M mesh is ready. Bool return. Um, return. Uh, we're going to have mesh ID. M dot mesh ID dot is valid. So now we need to go to mesh ID. And I'll change this interface to not no longer be blank, but have an is valid Boolean as part of it. Okay, then we can go to mesh ID. We can look for mesh ID GL, and we need an is valid on here. So func mesh ID G is valid. VAO is valid. Okay. Now. Let me get rid of some of these tabs. Shader cache, host, draw instance, main. Oh, I might use main. Okay, good enough. So uh, let's see where we left off. Now we shouldn't try to do any drawings if it's not valid. Oh, uh, did I not set something? Let's jump back here. Mesh ID. Mesh ID is nil. Um, so we can have that as part of our turn M dot mesh ID it will nil or is valid. Oh no 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 no. It is not equal to nil. I don't think I saved that build. So we'll have to rerun it. Still mad. Uh, I don't know if I saved the build. Let's try. Okay. M mesh ID is nil. If it's not nil, oh, and man, it's getting late. I can tell. Okay, so now we've got uh, a nice, beautiful blank screen, which is not what we want. But we can go over to our. Um, render gl and make sure we get down here we're not so let's come up here oh we're not we're not calling our delayed uh create so let's go to host and down here where we have create pending we need to create pending for the meshes as well as the shader and texture cache there's two quads interesting Oh, did I, I used it. I still have that old test code. I only want one quad here. Let's see. Key, uh, it's a main. And the stuff is upside down because I, um, in my old engine, I just had the flipped triangles to do stuff. 
which we no longer need. So I just need to fix that. I think it's this block here. Right? T, oh no, 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 it's this T. We don't need to add that instance. There we go, just add in the one. Um, and I'm also going to go see about flipping. Well, let's make sure this is rendering the one instance. And then I'll see about flipping. Also, it's way over here on the left. That's not exactly what I expect. Um, is it because, yeah. Let's just do, oh, we don't need to translate at all. Just stick it right in the middle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now I'm going to flip that mesh. Actually, better yet, I don't need to flip this. Uh, I'll, I'll just make it the same way I had the other engine. The beautiful thing about this is that we no longer need to flip in the texture. So where are we doing a flip? Did I call it flip? Flip. Nope. Uh, let's just see where we pull that data. Here we are. So I no longer need to do this block here. Thank you very much. Uh, resmem. I can just do res dot mem is equal mem is equal to mem, and that's even better because that means I won't have to flip every texture. There we go. So now we have our turtle right side up. Sweet. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. We'll find out. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to build out. Um, a bunch more of these uh, kinds of things. But before I do, I want to make sure that I'm hitting the mesh cache when I call it a second time. Let's go to the main, and we'll just say mesh and mesh2, and then format.printf p slash mesh2. Just so that it has a reference there that we can mess with. So the first time we call it comes through here. Second time we call it also comes through here. So our mesh cache, our mesh isn't doing the caching. I think I didn't even write the code for caching. That's probably why. So let's step into this. Yeah, I just added it to the pending meshes. So um, we should actually pull it out. So meshes, mesh key. I knew what I wanted to do. Okay. So the first time we go through, we should go through to cache. And the second time we go through, we should go and pull from cache. So we are, we're pulling it from cache. And then lastly, let's just add these to the same render instance. Yes, I know. I'm going back to what I originally had. Uh, so we'll do mesh and mesh too. So here's mesh. We have a draw group, triangle, data size, droid text, group, T. And we will just create a, we'll use that mesh two here, draw group, new draw group of that mesh, um, which is correct. Textures are set up here. So this is where we're creating and adding the instance, so let's just do this twice. And we will use, we have a fancy new, uh, actually let's do this twice, this whole block, because that'll prove that all the other rendering stuff is working. So, there is less than two I plus plus. Because when we come in here to add a drawing, it should find that shader and match those textures and all that stuff. So this is a great place to to check on that. They'll be overlapping, but we're just going to step through the code and see. So this is the first time through. That works fine. Now this is the second time. So we come in. We find a shader. This is false. So it didn't find the existing shader draw, which is no bueno. 
run through, hit it, step, step, step. Draws is currently at zeroth. If the shader is equal to that shader, the shader should be the same. Where does it show the memory address on this? Do I hover? Bro, show me the memory address. I always forget where it shows up in Visual Studio Code, but let's just. So these shaders are uh, obviously not matching each other. So shader, shader cache. So let's see why they aren't matching. I know I'm debugging something else right now, but whatever. It would, it's got to be done, right? At some point. So we're going into. This is the first time through. So let's go second time through. Okay. We get the key and shader, shader key. Oh, it didn't say it's okay. Shaders. Oh, it's not in the shaders. Oh, it's not adding to the shaders either. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, let's, make, let's check the texture cache. Texture. New pending texture. It's not adding to any of those. Okay. Wonderful. Well, at least we got those. So now let's go back to what we were originally doing. At least it was the same problem across all across the board. <laughs> okay, first time, second time, step, step. This one should be okay. True. So now we try to find a matching group. So we found a matching group that the matching textures. So we're going to merge them. So we've merged them. Okay. And we're not going to tell uh, because <laughs> they're going to draw. Um, that was not expected. Let's make sure that I didn't break anything. Let's draw with one. I did break something. Well, how about that? I don't know what I broke, but I broke something. It would probably help if I did uh, draw group dot add instance, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I'll do a red. Red. Wait a second. Uh, okay. Okay. What? <laughs> okay, so I've gone through and created a whole bunch. So, you know, the mesh quad we just did. I have a mesh triangle, a unit quad, so this is a 1, 1, 1, 1 instead of a 0.5 on the dimensions, a screen quad, this has the bottom left corner at 0, 0. We have a mesh uh, plane, and this should be plane. And the plane is just, um, instead of facing the camera, it's facing up, and the the normal is on the uh, y-axis. We have the mesh cube, which is your typical cube. We have your texturable cube, so you can put a texture on on this guy. Um, the problem with this one is obviously it's uh, optimized to have just a few few verts. This one has much more verts, so that the textures can look seamless across it. Uh, we have a skybox cube. We have a inverse cube, so a room. Um, we have a function for creating cubes since we have so many cube stuff. There's a function for a frustrum. So starting at this point, we're passing in the key because these are going to be kind of they're, they're meshes that have a default shape, but you can alter the the size of it. So you can pass in the inverse projection here and create a um, 
a frustum, but obviously you're probably going to make a bunch of different kinds of frustums, frustums, and they're all going to have, you know, different sizes and shapes and um, all that sort of stuff. But if we were just to make the mesh outside of the mesh cache, you would be responsible for doing the um, create uh, the delayed create the, the you know the pending create that happens on the main thread you'd be responsible for that and you can't forget it and just to make it simple right now we're just passing in the cache and the key so this key could be a, a guid or something like that i guess for now not 100 sure how we're gonna um, play around with that i don't really like that but it it's functional um we'll come back to to how we mess with that same thing, uh, new offset quad. This just off makes a quad, but it's offset by a given amount. Uh, new mesh grid. This is just um, if you want to create a bunch of lines for a, in a grid pattern, and you can tell it how what the size is uh, of that is from the points. Essentially, you pass it a bunch of points, and it's going to draw left to right, left to right, top to bottom, top to bottom, that kind of thing. Um, as individual lines and then this one would want you'd want to put a shader on this guy that has a uh, draw mode or you'd want the instance group to have a draw mode of um, lines then we have a point if you want to do a singular point for any reason uh, this could be useful for I don't know uh, if you want to do some some shaders that deal with those points then you could do a uh, a line, just a regular line, and then a wire quad, which is useful for outlining stuff, that sorts of stuff, and then a wire cube. So those are all our default meshes uh, functions, and we're going to make a whole lot of use out of this new mesh quad when it comes to doing the UI and um, the fonts and all that sort of stuff. Okay, I'm going to leave it here for now, and hopefully we have enough for the MSDF font rendering that we will be doing next. And, uh, yeah, should be interesting. <laughs>